Pope and Young Club and Boone and Crockett Club member Fred Bear, the iconic woodsman, facilitator, and bow hunting pioneer, may have been the first to notice the whitetail's brilliantly rising star, proclaiming decades ago that as the whitetail went, so went the popularity of hunting in North America. Papa Bear related the whitetail to hunting's popularity in general. What he may not have foreseen was just how far this one deer species would drive the economy and industry of conservation in North America. The journey the whitetail has traveled to their present status as the ambassador of conservation and wildlife management was filled with peaks and valleys. From incalculable abundance to near annihilation, to abundance again, the white-tailed deer has figured into the cultures and economies of North Americans dating back to pre-European settlement. To Native Americans east of the Mississippi, the white tail represented the most abundant large mammal, source of food, clothing, and tools. In post-European settlement, the white tail was the first economy of the American frontier, literally. A white tail hide was worth one dollar to the huntsman. Hence the coining of the term buckskin, and then the slang term buck as a synonym for our base currency. The wild meat of the whitetail fueled the fires of an expanding nation, providing reliable protein for the droves of settlers intent on taming the West, and later by market hunters intent on making a buck. The price paid by the whitetail was extreme. Though we can only speculate, at the whitetail population before the arrival of Europeans. At one time, there may have been as many as 30 million animals. By 1900, America had burned through millions of whitetails, and it is estimated that there were just 350,000 left. By 1900, with the whitetail positioned for obliteration, largely from the pressures of commercial market hunting, sportsmen stepped forward to save this deer and many other species that were in the iron sights of progress. 